Starship simply can't reach Mars, or even the Moon all by itself. That's why we have orbital refueling. Orbital refueling is a concept space fans have been hearing about for a few years now. But soon, this won't just be an idea floating around anymore. SpaceX is going to make it a reality as the Artemis mission draws closer and closer. So how exactly will this game-changing process unfold, and what challenges lie ahead for them? Let's find out in today's episode. SpaceX's method of orbital refueling has been carefully considered and meticulously designed. In this process, two Starship spacecraft will take center stage. The first Starship, called the Target, will be launched into Earth's orbit. Then, the second Starship, known as the Chaser, will be launched to chase down and rendezvous with the Target. Once the Chaser gets close enough, the two spacecraft will perform a highly sophisticated docking maneuver. Advanced navigation and automated control systems will guide the spacecraft as they slowly approach each other. The moment these two giant machines successfully connect in orbit will be something fascinating in the history of space exploration. Once safely connected, the most critical phase of the mission will begin, the fuel transfer. After the fuel transfer is complete, the two starships will gently separate. They'll make their final orbital adjustments before beginning their journey back to Earth. While this mission sounds incredibly complex and challenging, Elon Musk seems quite confident. He commented, it's just docking with ourselves. Not trivial, but certainly easier than docking with the space station, which is far more complex. His confidence isn't without reason. SpaceX has gained invaluable experience over the years by conducting docking missions with the ISS using their Dragon spacecraft. The ISS, a massive multi-billion dollar structure with astronauts aboard, requires the highest levels of safety and precision. For SpaceX to even approach and dock with the ISS, they had to prove that their technology met the strictest standards set by NASA and other international space agencies. So at the very least, SpaceX has an incredibly advanced navigation, guidance, and sensor system to start with. You all know that SpaceX needs to perfect the orbital refueling technique for the upcoming Artemis mission. But have you ever wondered why this mission absolutely requires this technology? To know why, we have to look at the bigger picture, NASA's Artemis program. The Artemis program, named after the Greek goddess of the moon and Apollo's twin sister, represents NASA's most ambitious mission since the lunar landings of the 1960s. At the heart of Artemis is the SLS, a gigantic rocket designed to launch the Orion spacecraft into lunar orbit. But here's the catch. The SLS is a single-use system, and it can only get Orion into lunar orbit. That's it. There's no plan in place for how astronauts will actually set foot on the moon, and that's the problem. To tackle this, NASA did what it does best, hand out contracts tracks, turning its problem into someone else's. This is where SpaceX steps in with its Starship. SpaceX won the contract to develop the HLS for the Artemis program, and SpaceX approached it in the way that makes the most sense for them, using a version of Starship modified into a lunar lander. This not only aligns with NASA's mission, but also helps SpaceX move closer to its long-term goals, including missions to Mars. For Starship HLS to complete its mission, it needs a massive amount of fuel. This is where orbital refueling becomes absolutely critical. To make the journey from Earth orbit to lunar orbit, land on the moon's surface, and then bring astronauts back to lunar orbit, Starship HLS requires far more fuel than it can carry when launching from Earth. Transferring fuel between two spacecraft is something SpaceX has never done before, which raises the question, is it too challenging for SpaceX? No, it's not that hard. Let's dive into why. First, it's important to understand that while large-scale cryogenic refueling in space hasn't been done before, similar operations have been carried out on a smaller scale. NASA, for instance, has some experience with this through the ISS. Specifically, NASA's Robotic Refueling Mission 3 was a project designed to develop and test technologies needed to store and transfer cryogenic fuel in space. Additionally, Russia has been doing this for years. They've used the Progress spacecraft to transfer hypergolic fuel to the ISS. This process involves automatically transferring fuel from the Progress vehicle to the ISS's fuel tanks to keep the station operational. While hypergolic fuel isn't cryogenic, like the liquid hydrogen or liquid oxygen SpaceX plans to use, this experience has provided valuable lessons in handling and transferring liquids in a zero-gravity environment. And interestingly, while no one has yet attempted large-scale cryogenic refueling in orbit, studies on this issue have been around for over a decade. For example, ULA had plans to develop hydrolox refueling in orbit more than 15 years ago. However, that plan was never put into motion, and the reason behind it is a textbook example of how politics can impact scientific and technological progress. Former Senator Richard Shelby from Alabama blocked the development of this technology to protect the SLS program, a massive rocket developed by NASA with strong ties to the state of Alabama. 
Shelby feared that advancements in orbital refueling technology would diminish the need for the SLS. This technology had the potential to allow smaller, cheaper rockets to carry out missions that once required larger, more expensive rockets with outdated technology, like the SLS. This could have threatened funding and jobs related to the SLS in Alabama. But honestly, while orbital refueling isn't a completely new concept and is absolutely feasible, it still presents significant challenges. First off, let's consider the number of launches required to complete the refueling process. This is a topic of much debate with varying estimates. Elon Musk optimistically predicts that around eight launches would be needed. However, other independent estimates suggest that number could climb to as high as 20 launches. To get a clearer picture of these numbers, we need to dive into the technical details of Starship 5-2, the upgraded version that's highly likely to be used for the Artemis 3 mission based on SpaceX's development progress and NASA's Artemis timeline. According to SpaceX, Starship 5-2 can carry about 1,500 tons of fuel to deliver 100 tons of payload to LEO. This means an orbital gas station in LEO would need around 1,500 tons of fuel. Since each launch can carry 100 tons, it would take 15 launches to fully refuel a Starship. However, we also have to account for fuel boil-off during the process, which could require an additional launch, bringing the total to 16. On top of that, you need one launch to send the refueling station into orbit and another for the HLS. In total, we're looking at 18 Starship launches for Artemis 3 using Starship V2. This presents a significant logistical and timing challenge. NASA and SpaceX have estimated that for the Artemis 3 mission, each Starship tanker would launch about a week apart. This means the Starship gas station will need to remain in orbit for around three months. While three months might not sound like a long time for a typical satellite, it's a whole different story when you're talking about a tank full of cryogenic fuel. The cryogenic propellants are prone to boiling off even at extremely low temperatures. As temperatures rise, even very slightly, some of the liquid fuel converts to gas. This process, called boil-off, naturally occurs as heat transfers into the liquid. On Earth, atmospheric pressure helps contain the effects of boil-off to a certain extent. However, in the vacuum of space, this evaporation happens faster and is much harder to control. SpaceX will undoubtedly use advanced insulation systems to minimize heat transfer into the fuel tanks. But over a long period, heat will inevitably leak into the cryogenic fuel tank. This requires the use of active cooling systems. Cryogenic cooling systems, or cryocoolers, must continuously operate to maintain the required low temperatures. These systems need to be be both highly efficient and reliable to function in the harsh environment of space for an extended period. They must be powerful enough to handle the heat leaking into the tanks, yet light and energy efficient enough to avoid significantly increasing the spacecraft's weight or energy requirements. And you know what? SpaceX isn't starting from scratch in tackling these challenges. NASA has been researching and developing technologies to combat boil-off in cryogenic fuels for years, such as their zero boil-off efforts. NASA has also partnered with industry to develop and test high-capacity cryocoolers. These systems circulate coolant through a network of pipes installed around the tanks, helping to keep the fuel at the necessary low temperatures. These tests have provided valuable insights into designing and operating large-scale cooling systems in space. SpaceX can leverage these research efforts to develop thermal management systems for Starship. However, they still face the challenge of scale. Starship's system will be much larger than anything previously tested, requiring significant innovation in design and engineering. And then, there's the sheer number of launches. To make this all cost-effective, SpaceX needs to perfect the process of recovering and reusing both the booster and the spacecraft itself. If they can't achieve full reusability, the cost of these launches could skyrocket. SpaceX is making steady progress toward this goal through its continuous Starship test flights. Their strategy is to conduct tests with increasingly ambitious targets, with the ultimate aim of achieving full reusability. They also plan to test orbital refueling in the near future. We can see this ambition in their plans for Starship's fifth test test flight. In this launch, SpaceX aims to recover Starship's booster through the highly anticipated booster catch maneuver. This will be a critical first step in proving Starship's ability to eventually support NASA's Artemis program. Concerningly, however, the FAA seems more focused on creating barriers for SpaceX rather than facilitating their progress. This has caused significant delays to Starship's fifth test flight schedule. Given the current situation, it seems we are still a long way from seeing SpaceX test its orbital refueling technology. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.